Okay, hello students. So what I'd like to do in this video is tell you a little bit about the photometry experiment you did, the sun photometry experiment, and actually sort of highlight then, you know, what did you actually do with that work? Okay, so here's the way it works, of course. The core lesson that sun photometry was supposed to get across was sort of what we learned about how the atmosphere affects light. So we have the earth like this, and say we have, oh, let's say I'll draw the atmosphere in gray. Say we have a bunch of gases in the atmosphere here surrounding the Earth. As we discussed, that when light comes in from the sun, so if the sun is over here and you have all those light coming out, as a light ray comes in from the sun like this, what happens is the light ray travels through the atmosphere, as you hopefully you know now, is that the blue light just sort of leaves the beam. And the blue light that goes downwards is the stuff that gives us the blue sky and so on. And if you have sort of, I guess I should sort of draw the ray coming from the sun in white like this, because it actually is white light. And so if you have some white light here and you get all the blue rays being removed, then what you have left, of course, is the red light like this. So there'd be red light here. And that leads to that idea then that if maybe you were standing on Earth down here experiencing the sunset, then this red light would go into your eye and you'd see the red sunset. So sort of blue sky in this region right here, red sunsets and so on. And it's all due because what happens when white light goes through a bunch of air, the blue exits like that. So how did that, what did that do with our measurements? Well, let's just go back and think a little bit about what we did because it's sort of in that same vein as some of the lectures that I gave you. And that's what I like so much about having you do the sun photometry. Okay, so here's the earth once again. And let's just remember now that when it was noon, remember one of the times you were supposed to take some data was at noon like this. So here's the sun like this, and here's some of the sun's light coming down. And let me just draw some atmosphere around it like this. Here's all the air in the atmosphere here. And so what we know though about noon is it is true then that as this white light starts to bury down into the atmosphere here, oops, as this white light starts to bury down into the atmosphere here, of course the blue light's gonna leave the way it always does, but the issue at noon is that this layer of atmosphere, I'm not going to say it isn't very thick, but it's not as thick as it is at other times in the day. In fact, this depth is as thin as it's ever going to be during the day. And so then what happened when, if, when you were down here taking your measurements at noon, let's say I'll draw you as a little green person here, and say you're up there, and what happened is you got your cardboard tube out like this. Here's sort of your cardboard tube, and you point it up at the sun. So it looks something like this. And maybe in one, in one run, you had all your red filters jammed in here. And so what that did is as the sunlight sort of came through, it would go through the tube, through the tube, hit these filters, but the filters only let red light come through, okay? And so you made a measurement with red light like that. And then maybe, let me draw a couple more of these here. Then, then maybe a couple minutes after that, you got the tube out and you put the different colored filters in there. So maybe in this second one here, maybe you put your blue filters in there. And then in the last one, maybe you put your green filters in there. So of course what'll happen is then the, the sun's light will come through and it hits the blue filter. Only blue light's gonna come through. Something like this. And when the, red, the white light from the sun comes in and hits the green filter, only the green light's gonna come through. So that's sort of what the filters were about. And then of course your solar panel, I guess is this blackest looking thing was sort of sitting down here like this, this and this. And it would tell you the amount of red light hitting the solar panel and the blue light hitting the solar panel and the green light hitting the solar panel. So at noon, because the atmosphere is sort of not really as thick as it could be, it's sort of a mixed bag about what exactly we're gonna get. So when you made your bar graph like this, here is your bar graph, and some of you very nicely color coded things, you'll get some red for sure, you'll get some green for sure, maybe something like that, and you'll get some blue for sure. But the point about this, um, at noon, so this is at, what we're saying at noon right here, is there wasn't any clear pattern to be seen amongst the different colors. In other words, you'll get so much red, of course, you'll get so much green, of course, and you'll get so much blue, of course, but the relative comparison between them was anyone's guess. Green is always a wild card, as I told some of you in some chats that we have, and but you're always getting some red and some blue in there because if you look up at the sun sort of at midday, we, which you're not supposed to do, but the sky gets really bright and whitish near the sun. So it's no surprise then that there's really no trends you're going to see in the bars. So generally speaking, just about anything you turned in at noon, so long as you did it properly, it was probably going to be correct. I really don't have anything I could say about any specific trends we were expecting to see at noontime. However, when the sun started to go down, though, at sunset, so when the sun gets really 
gets sort of in a position like this here, uh, again, because of the Earth's rotation, as you know now, say we're rotating away from the Earth, the Sun rather, and you get down here now as a little person, and so the light that's coming in from the Sun has to travel through all of this thick, thick, thick atmosphere now, right? Much thicker than it was at noon. So the noon is just here, but sunset or sunrise is all of this path right here. And of course, all that traveling through the air just keeps removing blue, removing blue. Little, little arrows on this is removing blue. This is the blue sky argument that we covered in the lecture. And of course, what'll happen then is the light is just gonna become redder and redder and redder as it gets to your eye like that because the blue is getting removed. So what would your graph look like then? Well, you draw sort of something like this, and this is sort of a sunrise or sunset. Sunrise and sunset are very equivalent in terms of where the sun is like that. And so, again, how much red, how much blue you're going to get, anyone's guess, it's definitely going to be smaller because it's getting darker. There are all the bars would be smaller in general. Blue is always a wild card, as I said. I don't really know what to say about blue, maybe this much. But the point that we are looking for then, and red's going to be so much, the point that we're really looking for is that the proper sunset reading, the red would always be greater than the blue. So I think this was the major trend that we were looking for at sunset here, that the red is always going to be larger than the blue. That would just have to be like that. And it's a confirmation of the lesson that we learned about how when sunlight travels through thick atmosphere, the blue leaves and the redder lights, redder wavelengths persist. And so your bar graph would have really had to look like this. And the fact that the blue is in here coming in kind of small like this, meaning that the blue, by the time it gets to you, was definitely removed from the beam, where the red mostly is going to remain in the beam, of course. And that's the origin of the red sunset that we see. So this would sort of have to happen here. And so those are sort of the trends that we're looking for. Just about anything is okay at noon. But the sunrise or sunset, we'd have to see a larger red bar than a blue bar if everything went properly for you, okay? And so lastly thing, the thing that I just really like about the lab, uh, independent of any great results like that, and you can tell there's like tons of senior projects even in this one I'm discussing alone here, but the thing that I really like about this lab is a couple of things. Is one, it allowed you to use some equipment. In this case here, you had your voltmeter and your solar panel or solar cell. And I think that's pretty cool. A lot of you don't, maybe you won't have any exposure to voltmeters and never, maybe never will, but you got a chance to use some. And the numbers that you took to generate these bar graphs here are actually real science. This is called sun photometry. It's done at uh, probably uh, a couple dozen universities nationwide and international for monitoring the sky and have students doing this sort of thing at varying different levels. So that's the first thing I like about it. And the second thing I like about it is your, the, what it sort of forced you to connect to the atmosphere some in a way that the lecture, you know, sort of wanted us to, but the lectures are just the lectures, right? And so the connection that I'm talking about here is that you're actually seeing effects of the thickness of atmosphere between you and the sun at noon versus you and the sun at sunrise or sunset. And that was reflected in the bars that you saw. Because remember, this is you going, you're standing here, this little green person right here, and you and your device are intercepting rays that came directly from the sun went through the atmosphere and happened to hit and go right into your tube. That's kind of cool. That's that connection point. And likewise, you did the same thing at sunrise and set rays that came all the way from the sun and were plowing through the atmosphere and losing the blue color as it goes, finally went into your tube. And hopefully you witnessed that. Yes, the red remained primarily and the blue was removed. And again, green is anyone's color. So that's the connection point with the atmosphere that I, I was really happy about that I think we got in this lab. So anyway, that's what the sun photometry was all about.